savings, savings is not rewarded like in fiat. That's like the classic issue that we cover all the time. And so, and so because of that, retirement accounts are often very stressful for people. You know, a lot of people are underfunded and not where they should be. If we're just thinking about a traditional, like how much money you should have saved when you're 65 kind of thing, a lot of people are behind. And a lot of people, it just, the stock market feels like it just gets cut in half every now and then. And it just seems like so random and stressful. And so that's why, that's why I think it's definitely important that we do have these tools to allow people to pull their, like pull them out of the old world, leave Schwab, leave Fidelity, leave TD Ameritrade. Welcome to the Tucson Bitcoin podcast. My name is Alex and I'm pretty stoked about this conversation today with uh, my buddy Brian Harrington from out in Orange County. He uh, helps run a meetup out there and they're doing some pretty great things. And here in Arizona, we're trying to, you know, emulate and accomplish similar things to what they're doing. I think we're doing a great job. So on that topic, um, we had a great meetup in Tucson on Saturday. Uh, we also had the Block Size War Book Club, which was a lot of fun, you know, discussing the first three chapters and, uh, you know, all the politics that were going into the trying to change the Bitcoin protocol and how Bitcoin is, you know, building this awesome immune system to just reject any sort of charismatic leader or attempts to co-opt it. Uh, I'm super you know, stoked on that. And, uh, you know, we got some pretty big news. We're going to be starting a meetup in Sierra Vista, Arizona. And I'm super, super stoked on that. I've wanted to do that for a while. Uh, I love that area. I love Cochise County. It's uh, awesome out there. I think there's a lot of people that could really benefit from Bitcoin. And I'm, I'm just super bullish on those semi rural areas of the country and what Bitcoin can offer for people down there. Uh, but yeah, in this conversation, we talk about, you know, Bitcoin circular economy, what Brian's been accomplishing out in California, and then also Choice, uh, which is a company that helps you set up an IRA to buy Bitcoin and self-custody it, which gives you the ability to uh, roll over uh, stuff that's in your traditional retirement funds into Bitcoin and no longer actually just hold it as an IOU to actually have ownership and control over it i think that's super amazing and incredible and uh i'm still learning about it i haven't done a massive deep dive in it but the, you know there's so many cool things that you can do with a model like that and i think it's going to be huge so anyways i hope you enjoy this conversation okay we're going good to have you on again brian welcome back dude love it thanks for having me fire yeah. up i'm stoked how are you holding up in California? It's good, dude. Life is good. Life is good. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I feel like last time we started chatting for the first time, it was um, kind of right as Stephen was transitioning out there from OC Bitcoin Network. And so we were still just figuring out what what we were just going to kind of continue doing. And last year, 2020 really had to, like took its toll on me. Um, but the meetup honestly was the the bright spot of every week. I truly did enjoy just kind of still seeing people every Thursday night. And I really made a lot of positive friends. And I learned a lot about Bitcoin last year. Just the just the guts of like use BTC pay server for the first time, installed it at a bunch of places. You know, I used cold card for the first time. I used an open dime for the first time. I just really did kind of started learning liquid. I started learning um, just lightning burst liquid a little more. And yeah, so I, I really felt good about the community that we kept building through all of last year and just beefing up my own kind of what, like, what am I doing? Oh, dude, I, I ran Samurai. I, so I, I ran a dojo for the first time. It was good. It was last year was a positive year, positive year for Bitcoin and positive year for meetups. Nice. Yeah, having Hedy Wook out there, he's a good reason. Yeah. Yep. No, he crushes it. And like, that was great. And, and honestly, when I was, I was like taking some time off. Um, when like just Shren and I just had our first son. And so I took some, a few weeks off from the meetup and dude, Francisco crushed it and took over and led a bunch of good workshops. And um, another guy, Brian does a great job and Asher and George, everyone does a great job. And what I like about meeting every week is if people come from LA or they come from San Diego or they come from out of state or they drive down from wherever, there's always someone there. And so it feels very good to be able to say, 
just show up. There's someone there and we can jam with you, you know, whatever, you, whatever you need. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. That's why meetups yeah. are so important. Mm-hmm. Dude. And I feel like we really did pull off the kind of Southwest United States kind of regional stuff that feels really good to think about. Um, just OC keeps doing its thing. You and Tucson Phoenix doing its thing. Las Vegas meets regularly. And then, um, Tahoe has a little account that they're trying to get running. And I even, I have one group message with a bunch of guys, a bunch of people in like Santa Barbara and like middle coast. And so there's, there's good momentum. And if people are in either of those kind of last three areas, we can continue to kind of plug people in, in those. Nice. Yeah. We need, we need a meetup in Yuma and mm-hmm. we need to meet up. Is there anything up North in California, like San Francisco? Uh, yeah. So yes. So Thomas, um, Thomas from bit refill did just start, uh, San Francisco. And then there is, um, uh, Redding right above that too. Also has stuff going on. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Thomas a lot. He's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 California. He came on, right. He did an episode. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. And they supported our, um, they supported our next burger event and we're really thankful for that. And so, that was cool. And next burger, I guess guys are going to start meeting there on Sundays to keep, uh, keep using their lightning node for the burgers there too. So that's cool. Nice. How many, how many businesses have you on ramp with BTC pay server? Yeah. So for brick and mortars four, the three next burger locations, and then the, um, tacos La Estrella in Rialto. Um, I almost got, and then there's two more. There was another burger place and there was a car repair shop that um, almost like the conversations are there just didn't quite get the last, just last kind of momentum on them. But, and then other than that, yeah, a, a handful of e-commerce businesses. But what's interesting for me is that the e-commerce businesses have always been harder for me than the, than the brick and mortars. Yeah. I think that is. I think it's partially my skill set that it just, I don't exactly have the web design stuff to get in the guts of the checkout flows, but then a little bit of it is also the checkout flows and all these sites do their hardest to kind of uh, chunk it down too and make sure you're using, you know, their approved processors and who they put at the top and stuff like that. Thanks. When, when you're setting up a business with BTC pay, what does that look like? Do you help them? run a node or is it all um done yeah off? yeah so, so the primarily the primary way i've done it is i tell everyone to go btc pay server the one click luna node install and that's kind of what we talked about last time but i've been able to just get it down more and more now and so yeah that's primarily the way that i do it because because then you don't i don't have to deal with kind of there's two things that that um get that kind of lock me up on going the raspberry pi angle and that's the like making sure that ports and like the networking works so that people can access it from wherever you're hosting it from and then also the uptime is the two challenges that i've had when running hardware so that's why i just kind of choose the choose the uh, cloud provider option yeah it's so much easier to do that and then from their end uh i think it's easier too and then as far as like lightning channels how do you help them manage that yeah. So honestly, that's my weakest part. And that's why it's good that um, just the more people that can get beefed up on that and like start helping people, the better, because that was definitely my um, weakest part. And I would just kind of tweet out and ask people to say, you know, hey, here's the note ID. Can you, you know, send us inbound? Gotcha. But as far as like getting a good score and like kind of, I, um, I'm not great at that so far good enough to you know get the payments going through but not not optimized interesting yeah that's a big challenge hey, have you yeah. messed around with the lightning loop at all i haven't no no but i want to and i th- and i'm pretty sure that deploying that part is getting easier and easier i think it is in btc pay server now I haven't had the opportunity mm-hmm. to do it yeah they've got it uh integrated with the ride the lightning yeah uh yeah in btc yeah. pay have you been able to do it? I haven't tried yet and I need okay. to. It was yeah. on my priority list like three months ago and then a bunch of other stuff came up. Yeah. And, yeah. I've been sleeping. Yep. <laughs> it happens. It happens. 
It, it is interesting. Like one of the things that I found really interesting out here is how much of a cash economy we have and mm-hmm. cash is going away. And I think it's mm-hmm. going to go away a lot quicker than people realize. And I think Bitcoin uh, can and needs to fill that void and lightning, you know, is going to be that solution. So it, it will be really fascinating to kind of watch that play out. Yeah. No, I remember you saying that about about Tucson last time. And I think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just have like so many undocumented people and, you know, even legal immigrants that don't have access to financial services in the same way and operate entirely off of cash. Sure. But, I mean, I... Have you seen people moving towards um, like uh, Venmo, like Venmo and PayPal at the counter? Have you seen any of that yet? Not really, but I haven't been paying attention to it. I, I think when like yeah. Apple Pay came out, that was pretty popular. Yeah. Uh, and I was living around the university at the time. And so, of course, you know, university kids are going to be a little bit more on it. But yeah, yeah. the majority of the city still use it cash primarily mm-hmm. for everything i mean it's just like yeah. it's just for like one of the things that i found amazing uh to learn is a lot of the businesses operating don't even have bank accounts out here wow wow and so they can't use venmo you know? yeah I, I guess you could yeah. use square um because that essentially, you know, operates as like a bank account. They give you a yeah. card and you can withdraw cash um, from an ATM or something. But yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the, the Bitcoin circular economy is coming. And yeah, I'm not very bullish on uh, PayPal and these other services that are integrating Bitcoin. I don't know what your thoughts are there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not my favorite, definitely not my favorite. And I think I went, I do, I went hard. I went hard for the last 12 months in 2020, just kind of focused on this, working on BTC pay server, working on just talking about circular economy, constantly talking about circular economy, talking about strike out, helping people work their way through it, helping work over the whole, you know, why do you want to spend Bitcoin thing? And I've, I've kind of taken a step back from that in the last two months of just, just trying to clear my head, not, not because I don't believe in it at all. I do super believe in it. And I'm super thankful for the work we are able to do. Um, I'm, I'm trying to just kind of reset my expectations and because it used to really bother me when people would say, you know, that we're so early because even though I agree with that, it also kind of sometimes can come across, I think, as like a cop out or like not a reason to take action now. And something that last year really taught me was Bitcoin is happening right now. The the new world is coming and being created right now. And we have the ability to affect that. Well, like, honestly, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. If person by person, business by business, we have the opportunity to affect that. And so if this money is something that I'm using day to day and I'm already moving on to the Bitcoin same day to day, then why would I not talk about it? Why would I not talk about it? There's actually physically no way for me to not talk about it because talking about everything else is boring. Like just is a distraction. Like I just can't, I can't physically sit still talking about the old world. And so and people could come across that say, like, you know, well, then you have an unhealthy obsession with Bitcoin and like you need to calm down like page to the off and whatever. And I'm not even talking just primarily about Bitcoin. I'm just talking about like if you feel like your business was beat down last year and you're talking about politics or about the cost of something or about blah, blah, blah thing that's hard. There is a solution. There is a solution. And so that's, I, I, I just can't sit still and let people not know about solutions to what's happening. I just can't, I don't, I, it's not exciting to be a part of the complaining anymore. And it used to be, it used to be. 
when I wasn't guns blazing about Bitcoin, it is fun to sit around and just kind of make political jokes and just, oh, um, you know, yeah, this is inevitable. Like, you know, we're getting screwed, da, da, da. It is kind of fun to do that. And it, and it makes you feel better in the moment. And it takes some of the um, requirement to act, you know, off yourself. But I, it's, not, it's not exciting for me anymore. And so it's hard for me to be around places that, it's hard for me to be around people and places that are just like being beat down by the old world. Because I, I feel bad for them and I want to help them. Um, so I don't know. That's, so th that's to your question of the whole PayPal thing. It's like, I think some people will still it's like some people will still find the PayPal option and it'll, I don't know, give them just some semblance of relief, a little bit of a relief, but it could be so much better and it could be so much closer. And so I'm trying to just, it's, it's such a weird blend of like optimism and pessimism <laughs> to just be like, it's so close, it's so close. And I wish more for PayPal. Like I wish more for PayPal and I wish more for the people that are Googling and arriving at that solution and not willing to kind of check to the next, check to the next level. I have another example of this a little bit. Um, I was meeting with a guy the other day and he was saying that his nonprofit wants to start taking Bitcoin and, or he said his nonprofit wants to start taking crypto. And what was great about this conversation was I was able to just be super direct with them. And I was like, look, there's lots of options to do this. You have to really decide what your thesis is about crypto to take your best foot forward. Because this is what happens. If you just Google this, you're going to arrive at some of the corporate guys, Coinbase Commerce and BitPay. And you could put that on your site. You could put that on your website and go with just the general crypto messaging of we accept crypto. And what's probably going to happen is that nothing's going to happen. No one's going to use that. What's going to happen is it, because the regular general public is when they see just crypto as a basket, they already have an opinion about it and it just is what it is. And you're not cutting through that noise to the general public. And then to Bitcoiners that have already have an opinion and have a direct opinion of where the future is going, the tools that they're choosing to use are going to look at your corporate options and they're going to roll their eyes and face palm and be like, you were so close. You were so close. And the, and the most positive, nice ones will say, you, will, you were so close, you're on the right track, but I'm not using this. And then the, you know, <laughs> like rude and like tough love ones will be like, you're not trying, like you're not trying, you're astroturfing this and you don't understand the movement at all. And I had a really great conversation with this guy actually. And I, and I, let, him, and I let him through the whole thing. I was like, look, like there's there's a classic thing in Bitcoin. It's like the BTC pay server and the free and open source route. And then there's like the pretty good software as a service route. That's the classic choice in Bitcoin almost all the time. And so if you don't want to do this one and you don't have the engineers on your team to do this one, you don't have the ability to do this one, then use the pretty good software as a service one. Um, but if you, do, if you then just don't, and so I let them know that like, look, open node has lightning and like, this is positive and you will get more traction with this and your messaging will be crisper because of this, because lightning is the transactional layer. And he totally understood, totally understood. And then, but it's like, if, if, um, if they as a brand still want to take kind of a crypto agnostic approach, and we've kind of heard people talking about this, like, you know, well, we aren't prepared to, you know, pick winners and losers. We just want to, you know, be a part of the, you know, innovation. I'm like, okay, I would probably use Coinbase over BitPay if that's your choice. But then in your meetings with them and in your onboarding calls with them, ask them to add Lightning. And if you want, you can run Coinbase and open notes side by side and make a landing page. And that's pretty, pretty good. And then in your lane, and then in your messaging, you know, I also think it's very, I think what's becoming a common term now is to, and I, I, I actually believe this is a positive development of people are being able to say Bitcoin and crypto. I think that's becoming a very common way of kind of 
blanketing everything, but acknowledging that there's a difference. And I think acknowledging that difference subtly is very powerful that it's kind of, I think that's a, you know, a decent thing for kind of the quote unquote industry to adopt, to talk about that. And so, yeah, it was, it was a really positive conversation and that's my, um, that's my long thoughts on just the, the PayPal thing. And cause, cause I think there's a big, Oh, this is actually a good point. I think, I don't know if it was Meltem or Will, but in our, so in that Twitter spaces the other day, when, you know, Choice was talking um, to Compass and Fold, and we were talking about the mining and the IRA stuff, it was either Meltem or Will that had a really great point that just said, there's a difference between, you know, a Bitcoin company and just kind of a company that puts crypto in their stuff and tries to just kind of loosely talk about it. And I think that's completely true. And I, and I actually believe that the kind of the landscape of people and consumers are really starting to pick up on that. And that's why like authentic brands like Fold are really starting to cut through. Fold has, Fold has really crushed it over the last eight, 10 months. And, and I think has really shined through on what they're good at and why people are using them. Yeah, I agree. That totally sounds like something Will would say. I think he said something similar on my podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a difference. I, I, there, there's a few companies out there. I think Swan does it pretty well. Uh, in, you know, I love the guys at Fold. Uh, Will comes to our Phoenix meetup, and you know, there's That's a lot awesome. of guys from Fold that are there, and they're just all solid Bitcoiners. I think that's huge. But yeah, that's a that's a great point. I mean, for one, you know, if you're a nonprofit, nobody's gonna want to send you their Uniswap tokens. You know. All, all the, you know, all coins out there, people are, you know, using them to trade unless they have like some specific utility, like maybe a library token, you know, and there's absolutely no point of ever accepting those. And right, just, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a silly, silly idea to be accepting all coins uh, versus. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. And that's why it's like, I think, that's why I'm actually really bullish on the idea. And I think we were getting into this last time, but of the idea of just kind of independent BTC pay server consultants, I think, or just independent Bitcoiners. And it's really hard to charge for advice. And we've kind of learned that of like, there's really a lot of kind of Bitcoin evangelists and just Bitcoin um, power users that really know their stuff. And getting people to pay straight up for advice to cut through the noise is pretty, pretty difficult. But I think getting paid to execute on things and deploy software and kind of um, be the like user service kind of things for companies, I think is definitely a niche. And I think it's a way that as kind of more and more Bitcoiners, um, kind of like, you know, like soft retire, like quit their corporate gigs and move on to kind of doing their next thing. I think there is a path for a few people, a good amount of people to be kind of that regional person that can can kind of start helping install some of this open source software because the open source software is getting better and better every day. And the communities around them that kind of help solve issues are getting better and better every day. And both of those, I think, are really going to back up grassroots people that develop out of these meetups. So this is furthering the mission. And we've, we've, we've accomplished so much based on last time that we talked and just through the book, the Bitcoin is book club and like all that stuff and everyone getting to know each other, doing that whole thing. So the meetups are there and we're starting to see businesses think about it, think about it, think about it. And I, I think we are only one or two kind of like franchises away from this becoming a, a pretty decently traction thing in each city. And then people will be able to kind of support themselves as an independent consultant doing this, um, you know, helping, helping throw meetups and helping businesses kind of adopt the Bitcoin standard. Um, because this, because in a funny way, this is just what IT always does. This just is the is the transition of, you know, upgrading your systems, upgrading your systems. And if you're running the old money, I think we can take a lot of analogies from that. You're physically running the old money. Your money software is not 2021 grade. 
it's not 2022 great. You need, like you need to upgrade your money software. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Bitcoin is the it's the life raft, and this is an incredibly important thing to be doing. I think like one of the things that people are struggling with, like inflation's becoming a meme, and people are joking about it a lot. Uh, yeah, they're feeling it, uh, but I think people really struggle to see the urgency of what's happening here with the money being devalued and and how that's just going to kill all the local economies. And that's yeah. why yeah. doing this type of stuff is so incredibly important. I, I completely agree. Like, and I had a lot of conversations around that actually this last week. Um, in that sense of urgency, I, people, people have the ability to make a switch. You, it's not inevitable. You don't have to let this happen to you and you also don't have to 100 percent of your customers don't have to switch over to using bitcoin tomorrow but you can take half if you're an individual or a business you can take half a day take half a saturday think about the future and i just actually look at your personal finances and actually look at what's happening and like start to make some decisions you have the ability to do that and so that's I, I i agree that's kind of what i was talking about earlier is i just feel like there is a lot of um there is a lot of complaining and there is a lot of just kind of finger pointing and a lot of woe is me you know starting starting to feel it the where the inflation is a meme and it's kind of just well yeah this is just the way it is this is the way it is and it's like that it's not like it's not the way it is and it doesn't have to be um like that you have the ability to do something about it and so and and so when those people then come back with the same like what's the classic thing in that conversation then they'd be like well bitcoin's too volatile like that's the same thing that's literally the first thing and it doesn't matter if you're talking to an old person or a young person or a person who studied economics or a person who didn't study economics i have no idea how that's like the thing but it's like, well, it's too volatile. And you're just like, man, you just saw, you know, the price of a two by four go from $4 to $14. How? <laughs> I, I mean, to, everything is volatile. Everything is volatile and weird right now. So you can't say it's that weird that I just showed you there's all these people in your community that are meeting up at this place to discuss this idea of a better future I don't, it, it definitely deserves a look. It definitely deserves a look. And I have a lot of optimism. I've, I've never been, a lot of people in my surroundings and my family and friends have taken me up on like taking a look. A lot of them really have. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Very, very thankful for that. And I think just what's funny is that it's never the ones that you would expect that like take the, take the second look in my opinion in my experience it's always been the ones that i've like that that i felt the closest to and i've like ended up having the most just heart like kind of heartache over of just them not getting it um are the people whereas then just other other people that i'm just kind of loosely acquainted to are like yeah makes full sense would love to start you know doing a little bit of it yeah yeah it's super I mean, people are willing to buy Game stock or GameStop stock. Gosh, it yeah. sounded like a politician yeah. for a second. <laughs> game stonks. They're willing to yep. buy some Game stonks, but they won't buy some Bitcoin. Hold it. I think yeah. like part of the problem is just time preference for a lot of people. That's kind of like a yeah. segue. So you just recently started working for Choice. We we're talking a little mm -hmm. bit before, and I had some... Uh, questions and you answered them I'm feeling pretty bullish on on the service i'm going to start referring it to my boomer family um yeah yeah no totally man um thank you and yeah i think you're i think you're right of the the time preference of people savings savings is not rewarded like in fiat 
that's like the classic issue that we cover all the time. And so, and so because of that, retirement accounts are often very stressful for people. You know, a lot of people are underfunded and not where they should be. If we're just thinking about a traditional, like how much money you should have saved when you're 65 kind of thing, a lot of people are behind. And a lot of people, it just, the stock market feels like it just gets cut in half every now and then. And it just seems like so random and stressful. And so that's why, that's why I think it's definitely important that we do have these tools to allow people to pull their, like pull them out of the old world, leave Schwab, leave Fidelity, leave TD Ameritrade. Even if you leave the account open and you just kind of still have one foot in the old world, you can still do partial transfers and partial rollovers. And so it, I think it is a good fit for, there's lots of people that it can target, but it is a good fit for someone who, you know, you, they've been thinking about Bitcoin for a while, thinking about Bitcoin for a while, but for whatever reason, just kind of their normal day-to-day bucket is not, not set up for that. They're just not prepared, you know, to, to kind of think that long-term with that money. Hopefully, hopefully it is something that can, can be a good resource for those kind of people. Well, I think that's that idea of the rollover is so big because there's so many people that have been orange pilled that want to get their money out of, you know, in, into Bitcoin and out of the traditional investment portfolios and are going to get penalized yeah. for doing it. And now you don't have to. Totally. Yep. I agree. I completely agree. And because you see, because you see people on Twitter talking about, you know, they just ate the fee, ate the penalty and just kind of went for it and did it. Um, and that's, that's good that some people did that. That's positive. If that worked out for them and that fit their plans and exactly, but you're right. A lot of people are afraid of that penalty and a lot of people, that penalty, if you have a lot of money, that could be sizable. Actually at any level, that's sizable. And so you might not want to pay that in any one year. Um, and then if you time Bitcoin, you know, a little bit off and you don't have the um, ability to hold all the way through it, then you're obviously in a, in a super not good place too, because then you, you know, you don't have the retirement account and now you also don't have the Bitcoin because you've, you know, weren't able to hold through, but yeah, I agree. And that, that's what's so, um, that's what I like about, so Kingdom Trust has been around for a lot of years and they've been doing this with alternative assets for a lot of years. And that's what I like so much is that they have the transfer scheme knows exactly what they're doing. They can work with the old, like uh, old guard and you just have to fill out the transfer form and just kind of stay in communication with both sides. And you do, you bring it all over inside the same, same structure that it is. Yeah, that's that's so dope. That that's incredible. Mm-hmm. And and then you can get it in your own wallet. Like, and that's what we we're talking about on the way um, before. Is that so? If we're super talking about the product, there's there's three ways that you can hold it, and so it can fit any any kind of Bitcoiner that you are. Look, if you if you want to like use a little bit in the interest product, or if you want to hold it at um, Fidelity Digital Assets and hold it in there through the program, you can do that. Or if you're prepared to take it into your own wallet, and if you want to mix and match all these things, you can do that. And so, yeah, I definitely think definitely think it matches any level of Bitcoin or any level of conviction. Yeah, and they've got services through Casa. Mm-hmm. People yep. that are comfortable uh, managing their own multi sig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing that, and that's not the only option, which I think is cool too. But yeah, it's yeah blows my mind it's such a cool product. yeah no it's sweet it's sweet that we have bitcoiners in all like all walks of life and all different uh occupations like i listened to um i listened to citadel dispatch with the attorney uh rafael on there the other day and i love that episode i love that episode and i loved how i love listening to a guy like matt odell and him talk because they just have they have totally different perspectives and they have totally different skill sets and it's positive it it shows how well rounded bitcoiners are as a whole and that we can tackle each of these industries and meet people wherever they're at that's what makes me i've just never seen that i've never seen that from another community like another community tries to say that they're well rounded and big tent and have a lot of buckets covered but the bitcoiners have everything covered and hit things from multiple different angles all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm still just kind of blown by, you know, what, what choice through kingdom trust is doing. I mean, this is like the first time that you can self custody your IRA. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's other obscure options out there, but it seems like this is the first time that, you know, something's being launched that is readily accessible for a lot of people. 
Totally. And so I've talked about that a lot too. And it's because there are other ways to do it. And there are lots of Bitcoiners that have figured out how to do it, but it's very tough to replicate their success. And so that's exactly why like choice app on iOS and our uh, web app are, that's why it's there. So that every Bitcoiner and everyone can just go down the path, go down the path, go down the path. And so, and a big part of that is that, so it's not just buying Bitcoin either now. When we announced this uh, partnership with Compass and the ability to where you can buy ASIC miners through Compass and have them mine and pay your retirement account all without paying taxes on that. And so you're literally creating Bitcoin denominated income, untaxable Bitcoin denominated income, and just creating a SAT stacking machine physically that's just going to grow and grow and grow over time. And the ASICs themselves are assets. So you're holding those assets and thing. And it's like owning rental property that's just paying you in Bitcoin passively, you know, kind of all the time. And so that's exactly, Compass did the same thing. They took what used to be this hard thing of like, how do I even get an ASIC? How do I figure out how much energy? How do I do all this stuff? And they're like, look, we're going to democratize this and give everyone access to this and give everyone the bulk pricing that we um, enjoy and just be able to do that. And so, yeah, that's I'm, I'm fired up about that part too. And you're exactly right. We're just trying to make a simple path through our software that anyone can set up a self-directed IRA, stack SATs, stack ASICs, Keep preparing for the future. We've got some massive compass shells at uh, <laughs> the Arizona Bitcoin Network. It's been that's a awesome. major topic of discussion recently. That's uh, good. That's good. So I think a question people would have, what do what the fees look like in, in doing this? Yeah. So for, for the hold your own keys package and for the mining package, both are very similar. So the pricing is still a little bit in motion for the mining package, but for hold your own keys, it's a $500 setup and it's $120 annually plus whatever cost of membership you get. And so, or if you don't have a cost of membership, then it's just plus whatever multi-sig kind of membership you have somewhere. But, or if you choose to move, move your own wallet, then there's no thing on that. But yeah, but it's the mining is going to be very similar. It's going to be something around $500 setup and it's going to be something around kind of an annual fee of 120 and then from there, it's just the getting started with mining. Everyone, the miner prices are all at Compass's website, so people can see those. They kind of range from um, kind of fifty one, fifty eight hundred, all the way to I think they do have ones over ten thousand. I think the S nineteens still are over ten. But yeah, so and you can pick any of those that you want as long as you have the funds inside your retirement account because you do have to purchase it from inside your retirement account. Um, and then your hosting fees get paid right out of the retirement account too. And that'll all just get kind of handled passively. Gotcha. How, do, how does that fee structure compare to, you know, like traditional funds that are out there? I don't know. Like to mutual funds or to what? Yeah. Like if you're going to set up a Roth with um, Charles Schwab or, or somebody like that. Got it. Um, I don't think so there probably is a higher there's it's definitely a higher setup to start your own self-directed IRA. Um, but that's what you're kind of paying for to get the benefits of being able to hold whatever alternative asset you want. Like Schwab in those places probably have like, they have like minimums to open up mutual fund positions. They're probably in the 500 to a thousand range too. Yeah. And then they have awful performing portfolios too. Yeah, then there's definitely that part that you're kind of paying for the whole time of just being stuck in fiat denominated investments is definitely the <laughs> definitely the kicker. Yeah. Yeah, they have like yeah. My it was amazing for me to, you know, have a sizable amount of Bitcoin and then a sizable amount of in my Roth and kind of compare the performance. And yeah. It was ridiculous. Like, yeah. Oh, my Roth yeah. is up 22%. Bitcoin's up 300%. Totally. I was stuck in that same boat of like, so yeah, when my wife and I would sit down and look at her retirement, look at her IRA, it was kind of like, it, it was fun for a little bit to kind of, you know, buy the mining stocks. And then when, te look, when Tesla, I'm talking about this, when Tesla like, put it on the balance sheet, I was pretty excited. I thought like both movements were like moving together. And so it was fun to like own a little bit of Tesla stock. But then, no, as I just kept chatting, I would look, look, I would DM with the choice account on Twitter the same way everyone else does. And that's why when I started talking with them, I was like, 
I've been loosely aware of you guys for about a year and I want to get this information out farther and broader because this is possible and it's not complicated and the switching costs are completely worth it. You know, I, I, for one, I was a little bit guilty of believing I thought Fidelity was just going to turn it on. Again, I think I talked a little bit earlier about just resetting my expectations. I thought Fidelity would just turn this on for everyone. But what's happening is that all these places are only turning it on for rich people. And I'm like, I, I, that's super frustrating and like sad. And so moving, pulling it over into choice from there um, was a blessing, like physically a blessing outside of me working there for me and Sharin to be able to do that because it was being underutilized when we had it at Fidelity. And so it, yeah, it, it made me just think like, this is real money. Like, why am I messing around with just kind of like <laughs> stonks and why, why am I not taking this seriously? So that, that really was a wake up call for me. Yeah. Dump your cuck bucks. Buy Bitcoin. Yeah. 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 It's, it's going to be, I, I mean, I've been amazed at how quickly Bitcoin has been developing in recent times. I think, you know, one of the things that is kind of kind of alarming and concerning, I think a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines right now is because of the regulatory uh, volatility that's happening with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to jump in and, you know, make a strong statement when you have the state's boot on your neck. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah. I agree with that. I think people find like, I, if you want to find an excuse, you will find an excuse. And it still is very mind blowing, perplexing to me every day, just looking at my friends that do take the jump and looking at my friends that don't take the jump and talking with people that are just kind of constantly one foot in one foot out. That's honestly, that's honestly probably actually the most confusing one to me. The, peop the one that's the most kind of tough for me to just continue talking to is the one foot in, one foot out. Um, because, look, just, just loosely, just talking with friends. It's like, look, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Totally. Like, hit me up whenever, man. Like, I'm here and down to chat whenever. And then if it's just like, put a little bit in. like I have so many friends from high school that are just in like college that are just casually like 200 bucks once every other month of just like a little you know like no and and they text me and they're like dude this is working out like super cool what's the latest you know and very very like just casually passive like with it and I love that I love that but then it's just this middle of it's like man I sold and I'm like okay dude well I just then you have to just decide what is your thesis? What is the thesis? What do you believe about the future? What do you personally believe about the future? Because it requires asking very direct questions of yourself to be like, what, what is your opinion? Is the direction positive or negative? Is fiat money infinite or not? Like, is your life getting more expensive or not? <laughs> and I think that, that like directness, um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting to see the people that kind of hop on the wagon versus don't. I think this is why I'm super bullish on the idea of the localized circular economy versus like trying mm -hmm. to capture the government or, you know, giant corporations. Because like, yeah, you know, Tesla, like they're one of their big revenue sources is from bootlicking pretty much. Yeah. They just go in yeah. Nancy Pelosi's polish shoes and yeah. get get a big contract. Yeah, yeah. I and I started watching a lot. I started paying a lot more attention to um, Ark Invest and like Kathy Wood over the whole when they put it on their balance sheet too. And I love the vibe and I love listening and I think. I, the way that she talks about, you know, five, that just like five um, innovative trends are all happening at the same time. They're all going together. Totally agree. Totally agree. I think it's, I think it's exciting. And I think her conviction and the conviction of the team is really exciting. I, I don't understand why they won't just buy physical Bitcoin too. 
I think it's I think it's great that you know they're using GBTC and making that as a big public stance. And I think it's great that they um, helped lead the event and just kind of you know talking just the other day. Um, but some of her statements about you know bond like Bitcoin replacing the bond market and things like that that that's like really really powerful. And it's like, I, I wish that they would kind of take that next step too of um, figuring out physical Bitcoin. Yeah, I was, we were talking about this at the meetup. I think I was talking about this with uh, Will Reeves. And um, I think one of the biggest reasons why the micro strategies and, and big companies like that won't touch uh, physical Bitcoin or, or at least self-custody it is because mm-hmm. they want a finger to point at if things go awry and they don't want to take on the uh, the risk associated with holding their own. Um, so yeah. maybe that's why, you know, she's doing that. Totally. Yeah, I can see that. And I think that was a part of the Tesla thing too, where it was like, it might not have even been necessarily him. It was like other investors that were asking, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Um, I... No doubt, look, no doubt that it's very complex world in public company leadership, no doubt. Um, but I think it's interesting that that how much at the whim <laughs> without Bitcoin, we kind of all are to that world. And that's what we're realizing. That's what Bitcoiners are realizing now. And that's kind of what the whole... <laughs> um, that just was super evident again last year that it was, dude, that you guys like you, I would say this a lot. You married us. Corporate America married Bitcoin. Bitcoin America, Bitcoin did not marry corporate America. Like, you guys married us. So if you want to just kind of like tiptoe around things and talk about things and kind of say things in the wonky way that you're kind of saying things. Sorry, like Bitcoin has been, the blocks have been the same. Like the blocks are the same as they were when you started this. And so don't know what to tell you. Yeah, kind of as you're talking, I think Elon may have made the statements he did because he also has to bend the knee to the ESG narrative that's going on right now. And I mean, this is the way it happened. They bought Bitcoin and then, you know, next thing you know, uh, Bitcoin's boiling the oceans. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the ESG movement should definitely not be underestimated because there's so much money tied up in that. It's ridiculous, like with BlackRock and Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. Um, yeah. 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 It's weird, dude. It's weird. It's big. That makes me think about, I've said this a lot over the last year too, like where are the... Um, where are the heroes? Where are the leaders? You know, if 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 Elon is gonna bend the knee like that, why like just kind of why? Why? Like why not be interesting? You're so interesting in so many other ways. Um why? Yeah. I mean, I think if there was ever a time to be bold, you know, and to rock the boat, it's right now. Yeah. Where it's such a pivotal point in human history and i don't think uh we can really afford to just be like oh well we have to you know just do it because we're being coerced like it, it's not time i agree no no definitely not definitely not that's why i think so <laughs> that's why going to meet up every week is honestly just refreshing it's honestly refreshing because it um just plant some flag in the ground of every week of just thinking about, look, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to talk about a better future and watching new people come in every week and just being at different places and being able to talk to, talk to brand new people that are interested in asking the right questions. It kind of gives me energy for the rest of the week when I'm still talking with people that, like I said, have the one foot in one foot out. It gives me energy. Yeah. No, it, it's realizing. It, yeah. Because the gravity, the gravity of the situation really does lean on me sometimes. And it's very, uh, it, it uses energy all the time of the, 
every single day feels really pivotal to me right now. And not even in a, oh, the whole thing is collapsing kind of way. It's not even, I'm not, I'm not waiting for that. I'm not waiting for some sort of symbol, like big moment. It's just every single day because every single, every single day is the moment because there's people, there's people that are getting crushed every single day. The prices are high today. It's happening today. And I, and I think that's where that's a little bit different. Um, that separates Bitcoin from kind of other like financial populist movements and ideas and rhetoric is that there's, it's happening today and there's also a solution today. Bitcoin is a 24-7, 365. You can opt into it right now with your cell phone and start to make it easier. Start to make your life easier. Start to make your money go farther right now at any level and at any income level. It doesn't matter if you're a rich person or a poor person. 24-7, 365 with a cell phone, you can start to opt into the new world and you can start to experience what it's like in the new world. And that is really exciting to me. That's huge. I hang out with a bunch of conspiracy theorists and libertarians that aren't Bitcoiners. And yeah, I like that crowd a lot. But one of the things they bring up a lot is like this idea of free banking and localized banking. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a silly concept because the state at the end of the day is going to crush any, they're not going to let you issue your uh, localized currencies and stuff. Um, yeah. And so, you know, Bitcoin is a solution. Like you're saying, it's right here. It's right now. And we, we can really fix these issues. And yeah. Kind of, kind of wrapping up. I'm just curious. Um, you're, you just recently had a kid. Um, mm -hmm. One topic that has come to, my interest recently is like how being a Bitcoiner changes the philosophy of raising kids. Have, have you seen that influence mm -hmm. you at all? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot about just like, I, I want, I, I want to just live right on the line of exiting the system and influencing the system. I have a really, I just have a really big passion for both. And cause to be honest, I don't think I'm like, I really am excited about both. I don't, when I think just when I analyze my skill set and I just think about my skill set, exiting fully and just going full, um, just prepper off the grid, like kind of person is that I just don't have the skill set for that. I might develop that over time. But, and then I also still, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, my brain still does operate in the influence of my network that I have, you know, around where I live still does operate, you know, a little bit within the system of the current local, you know, elected leaders that we have. And so when I so like look at just uh, my son and like hang out with my wife and think about just kind of where I'm living, where we're living and what I want out of that next little bit and what would be a positive experience for him as he gets older is it's, it's all about just right on that line of not being a part of it, but influencing it. And so I think, I think that does come down to like, I think homeschooling is definitely, I think, I think I'm homeschooling is definitely a thing, definitely going to be a thing. And I'm, but I want it to be, I want it to be some semblance of like software. So I still want to get curriculum from somewhere. I don't want to just be making it up on myself and doing that, but I want to be able to partner with other people that are making positive software that is kind of teaching kids in the right way and helping them gather skills and doing that. And then at the same time, I also really want to set an example for him of um, like actually working out. Like that wasn't something I ever grew up with. And so I want to set an example of, you know, being healthy, but not in a, I don't think I have the ability. I, I don't have it in me to over obsess about being healthy. And so I'm, I'm hoping to just gain enough skills in that area that can point him in a positive direction and more than I grew up with. So those are probably the two areas I think about the most of just what is kind of the next homeschooling round going to look like and what can I do to kind of just set him up on the right track of being healthy. That's dope. So you don't want your son to go to a communist training center? 
no, no. And <laughs> and it's so much of like I I drive past the school by my house and I just look at the parents that they drop them off at like 8 a.m. and then they pick them up again at like 12:30 p.m. And even when I think about that, maybe this is just selfish on me. I'm like, how do you get anything done? Like between nine and 12:30, I'm like, that's sim- I can't start and stop a task inside three and a half hours. I can't like, dude, I've got to like talk over here and then it just that would just jam up my whole day and so no I want him I something my dad taught me a lot is just how to get things done like how to have a zero inbox how to process information and just get it into your head and get it written down on the list and then just execute on it and how to not be don't be overwhelmed by everything that's happening just take all the input do what you can that day and then make the list for the next day I think I think I really want to start him early on just kind of that and I want him to be just a part of our house. So when, when my wife and I, you know, go to work for the day inside the room where we work and he's like hanging out with grandma during the day, I just want him to have his little tasks that he's doing. And then we all meet up at the end of the day. And I really want to start that really early. I don't want it to be like, yeah, I don't want him to, the, just the, the schedule of school also, I don't, I just don't think matches anymore. Yeah. I mean, uh, sentencing young boys to desks for eight hours is torture yeah yeah it's cruel yep but yeah um where are some good places people can follow you and what you're doing yeah dude um so follow me on twitter brain like in your head harrington brain harrington dms are all open and for everyone who may be interested in bringing their retirement account out of the old world into the new world, go to choiceapp.io. And that's kind of the new landing page for everything going on with that. We are releasing an iPhone app right now. So people have iPhones, definitely sign up for that list. And then for everyone who may be interested in mining in their retirement account, go to choiceapp.io backslash compass. And then DMs on Twitter are just the, yeah, the main way. Let me know, reach out and talk to me about, uh, talk to me about anything. Yeah, you're a good resource to have, 100%. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. And go to meetups. Go to the Tucson meetup. Go to the Phoenix meetup, Las Vegas meetup, Orange County meetup. Do it. And if you're not in the Southwest, move to the Southwest. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, no, thank you so much. That was a really fun conversation with Brian. Big thank you for him coming on and sharing a bit about what's going on in California and with choice. But yeah, I'm super bullish. We're expanding meetups around Arizona. We've got three cities. Uh, that is huge. I think there, there's a ton of different meetups happening around Arizona with really, really solid Bitcoiners. We're building a movement here of people that are just not... Uh, complacent and okay with the complete destruction of our society with bad monetary policy and uh, you know maybe bad monetary policy is a bad word for it It, it's more of nefarious uh, monetary policy and you know we're seeing it like people are just fed up and we have a solution we don't have to sit on our butts and complain anymore kind of like what Brian was talking about at the beginning of the episode that's just so old you know we don't it doesn't accomplish anything other than maybe feeling good and being powerless. It's somebody else's fault that, you know, my life is, and that's wrong, you know, because we have Bitcoin, you know, we have power and that's huge. And so I'm super stoked on it. Um, but yeah, get to the meetups if you haven't yet. They're just a ton of fun. It's really good to be around other people that are, have solution oriented mindsets and, uh, there's going to be some cool things uh, popping out of it. We've got, you know, a bunch of guys from Fold at our meetups. Uh, that's a company that's doing some really cool things. Uh, we have, you know, some guys from Zebedee at our meetups uh, growing Bitcoin gaming. That's going to be a huge market, uh, really changing things. And, you know, we're looking to do some Zebedee uh, style meetups. And it's, it's awesome. You know, I'm super, super bullish and stoked. And there's a lot to be excited about right now and to be optimistic for our future. But anyways, thanks for watching this conversation and I hope you have a good one.